Hello, Youth Ministry Land. It's Brinky here with another wonderful edition of Truth Bombs with the Saints. Today's saint is St. Lawrence of Brindisi, which I knew nothing about, honestly, because Father Kyle even said yesterday, is this the same Lawrence as Lawrence of Arabia? We found out, <laughs> no, it really is not. He was kind of hoping the movie knowledge would help him with the saint knowledge, but nope, he actually had to read about it. Uh, but he is a doctor of the church, so we should know something about St. Lawrence of Brindisi. I feel like this is this is a good one to learn about. Today, I am joined by four wonderful crew members here. We have Mr. Benj Clare, who I've known, I think I've known you your whole life, Benj. I was thinking of that. Little Clare family would come. I mean, I've known your grandparents since I was born, so, you know. Yeah, it's been a long family. time. I and know. Now I'm back. Yeah. Yeah, so. they all go to come to St. Eyes, you cute little family. So uh, <laughs> it's always good to have Benj here. Benj, what was your title or is your title yeah. for today? The title for today, I work in the Marriage and Family Life Office of the Archdiocese, coordinating an anti-pornography initiative. So, so there you go. I think that was under 20 words. That was under well, 20 I'm not sure, though. You know. <laughs> so it's only been. half your official title. <laughs> yeah, it's only half my official title. Um, but, you know, the other part is classified. So oh. Archdiocese and business. Uh, hey. it's, uh, that's between you and Archbishop Schnur. Is that how it works? <laughs> <laughs> it's between me and my own ego. <laughs> and we have Miss Andrea Patch with us, also with the Archdiocese of Cincinnati, in charge of curriculum evangelization and catechesis. I never get it right. So there that, we that's go. Only, that's only three words. Where's the other forty? Well, I'm a managing director, Archdiocese of Cincinnati. Um, you know, we could just okay, add okay, some okay. more in. Okay. Yeah. okay, sounds good. I try to keep mine short and sweet. Okay. Yeah. There you go. So at least they have an idea of what you do, but yeah. 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 And we also have with us for the very first time ever, a Truth Bombs newbie, Kelsey McCullough, who is a focus miss missionary, which means she works on college campuses with college students. So those of you who go on to college, you may one day get to meet a focus missionary. They're awesome. They're wonderful. They make sure you get to mass. They make sure you're connected to the <laughs> other Catholics on campus. They provide fun activities and opportunities to pray. So Kelsey used to be at Wright State and where are you now? I'm in Houghton, Michigan. It's in the Upper Peninsula, and I'm team director there. So Michigan Tech. Far, far <laughs> north now. I know it's crazy. It's, Basically, I didn't even Canada. know there was. Yeah, I didn't even know there was a Michigan Tech. It's funny. I have my friends that like have find my friends on me. They're like, "Are you in Canada right now?" And I'm like, well, an hour south. No. <laughs> you should have gone A. Eh? No. <laughs> Yeah. How close are you to Canada? Now, uh, Kelsey, did I describe focus missionaries pretty well? Yeah, yeah, okay. I think um, I have nothing to add. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my kid, our, our youth ministry kids who go on, once they meet a focus missionary, it seems like the whole faith thing kind of falls in place with them because they're not lost anymore. They've been found and, you know, can yeah, figure out how I to get to so. church and stuff. Yeah. I think, I think the best way to encapsulate what I do as a missionary is I'm a beggar who knows where the bread is. Like, I know, I know where it is. And I'm pointing, I'm pointing you that way. And so for each person, it looks different how that's lived out. It looks different how you, yeah, we're pursuing sainthood, but we're here to help you do that. Awesome. Awesome. And we also are joined by the good Padre, Father Kyle Schnippel, who actually is in the room right next to me, which is kind of funny. And she's right over there. <laughs> He's right nice. over there. So. <laughs> One of these days I'm ripping the wall down. Actually, we've talked about <laughs> Father Kyle swapping offices because with all the youth ministry volunteers, I really need the couches in the space and you could actually, oh, yeah. you're only here two days a week. You could hey. take the little office. This is I on did, the record. <laughs> I, I, did the take, I did take the little office at Corpus. So I, I mean, it, it, there is a precedent for that. <laughs> So. I just, or we're going to tear down this wall so David and I have a shared space, which would be we'll put in a window. And, put in yeah, a window. Little, little window. His mom said I needed a pass through so I could throw things at him. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we like to have a lot of fun here at St. John Newman and Corpus Christi, too. I feel like I live at both places some days, depending on the so day. So do I. So do you. So, St. Lawrence of Brindisi. Never mind. Okay. St. Lawrence. <laughs> 
Um, I just yeah. want to tell you a secret about Father Kyle. That last night he served us all dinner and it was delicious. And one of the seminarians helped cook and it was wonderful. And they had bought a cake from the store. Thankfully, it was oh. not one you had made because it would have been awful. And he pops oh, no. it out of the plastic lid and he pops the plastic off the cardboard and the whole thing just poof, on the table face down upside down <laughs> that was our little secret becky it was. and the other seven people that were there uh, yes and the other people that were there but um, we I saved just, it we saved it we could still eat it so we still just, ate it. it just didn't look as pretty and i just want you to know that your friend and mine mr michael said a five second rule on the cake so we're totally it was fine. on the table it wasn't on the floor that's it was right it wasn't on the floor and um <laughs> The seminarian said, I taste a little mahogany here. I said, oh, I think that's pledge. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, so we did have fun, but it was good cake. It just was. It was. Sh schmushed. Schmushed and schmushed. Okay. Padre, what have you learned about St. Lawrence of Brindisi since this morning? <laughs> since this morning, since like five minutes ago? Yes. Uh, <laughs> he was, strangely enough, he was born in... Brindisi, hence the of Brindisi, uh, and Brindisi is a small city. It was the so the Appian Way, the old Appian Way in Italy, was the tr main trade route from Rome to the eastern part of the Roman Empire, and it was Brindisi is the end of the Appian Way because it's a city. It's right at the the heel that that part of Italy that sticks down separately. Brindisi is on a port on a harbor in the Adriatic Sea, right towards the bottom, very bottom of the heel that you know of italy so uh, that's where he was born and raised but he was born and raised he was born to venetian missionaries so his parents were from venice but they were living in brindisi at the time mm -hmm. but he is not buried there we found out he is not buried there he's not he didn't die there but he's from no. there so yes okay yes. mr claire what did you find out about saint lawrence I found out that he's a doctor of the church, and I know that that's important, yeah. and I don't know what he's a doctor of. Like, I don't know why exactly, but I he, uh, yeah, 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 so we'll have to figure that out. Uh, he spoke a ton of languages. He's accredited for winning a war only with a crucifix in his hand, um, which is pretty sweet, and um, I liked his story because he was, um, he kind of lived like, it was, it's like a cool life. Like he did a lot of cool things. He was with a lot of, um, he worked for like, I think the Pope, he worked for like statesmen and Kings and everything like that. Um, but like, uh, so that was really, really cool. But he entered the monastery when he was like, or entered the religious life when he was 16. That's and then, mm -hmm. and then was ordained when he was 23 which is pretty young. And like, he had no, obviously no idea where his life was going to go. So I thought that that was a really neat thing is like when he was very young, he made this decision to join the Capuchins, which when you join the Capuchins, you know, it's this vow of obedience. And so just kind of, that's cool. You always think of religious, um, maybe sometimes staying in one place, remaining in one place, serving in a constant mission. And that's a really cool thing as well. But he was shipped, I mean, freaking all over the world. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's a really cool life from a vow of obedience. Mm -hmm. And considering this is late 1500s, most likely he was born in 1559. So we're talking late 1500s that he's traveling all over the European countryside. This was not easy travel. We're not hopping on a train. We're not driving our car. We're not hopping a plane. So um, yeah, these, these men and women we've talked about for these past few months who traveled in these eras just kind of uh, surprises me. He had, uh, his order published a 15 volume edition of his writings, Benj, and <laughs> 11 of those contain his sermons alone. Wow. That's, 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 that's a lot of preaching. That's, yeah, that's, that was the thing. <laughs> That was a thing they used to do. Like people would write down sermons. I mean, do we have like a 16 volume of Father Kyle's sermons? We should I get mean, working on that. If we took his podcast and started writing them word for word, that's how we do it today, right? We we just, yeah. But they preached a lot longer than we do today mm -hmm. as well. So, yeah. so their sermons were, you know, you were 
much, much, much longer. Not they weren't seven minutes. They were what twenty, thirty minutes the homilies. So. Hey. Well, and mass would have been like less frequent then too, right? So like this is the meat that you have to chew on for your opportunity to attend mass this month or quarter or. Yeah. 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 But he wasn't declared a doctor until John the 23rd. So he actually has not been mm -hmm. declared a doctor of the church for very long, for living in the 1500s. So. Aren't you a doctor of something? Like when you become a doctor of the church, aren't you like doctor of, like it's not, isn't it of some specific thing? Like they say. Aquinas is the angelic doctor. So like his, is that a thing? Padre is totally typing to find out. I am. I'm totally looking I thought it was up. a thing. So like you'll become a doctor of the church from what I understand, but it, it might not be doctor, it might be something else, but it's not for everything you've done in your whole life. It's like mm -hmm. on one particular writing, like this is like the height of church understanding yeah. is encapsulated yeah. like in this person. So you could be like, angels or uh, moral theology or something like that trinity or whatever it yeah. he got the title of apostolic doctor really apostolic yeah. doctor. Mm. there you apparently go. he was super good with like people like he was like super smart right but then also had like all these pastoral instincts and was able to like talk to anyone anywhere like counsel just speak straight straight truth to people like and knew the scriptures really well like yeah. i think that was something i read do you read that too andrea yeah yeah i was um one of the things he was most known for was his sensitivity to the needs of people which isn't usually oh. something attributed to someone who's like uber Thank smart you. scholarly like usually you've got the brains or you've got like the social skills uh, but he had both so I think like apostolic doctor just makes sense for him. I like that, Padre. <laughs> Eric, for all of you are listening to this in the car, Father Kyle just pointed to himself. So there you go. Now you know what you're <laughs> Start praying for the intercession. For the <laughs> Anything else you found interesting, Andrea? Um, just that he was, because of his knowledge of language, he was able to read the Bible in its original text. So he actually knew scriptures so well that Jewish rabbis thought he must be a Jew. Because I read he had that. <laughs> this, like extreme knowledge of the scriptures. You know, how could we as Catholics have that kind of knowledge of scripture? Um, so <laughs> that, that was interesting. That's like I just, today. I mean, if you even quote scripture once, people are like, you must be a Protestant convert. <laughs> 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 They're not wrong. I mean... Not wrong. So Kelsey, you got anything else? I know you mentioned the, um, you were the first to mention that dual, wonderful, having the people personality, but also the academia. Anything else you learned about him that was interesting? Mm -hmm. I think that was my mo the most fascinating. Honestly, all of those facts I found, you guys have all read, said out loud. I think it was really interesting that he was a Capuchin also, like as well, um, just cause like that order been around for ages and mm -hmm. we still know capuchins like they're still around they're still doing the things and so i think it's really cool to see how he lived out his vocation and like how um so many capuchins probably imitate i don't know i think that's so cool which i mean it's not particularly about him exactly but i was thinking about that a bit yeah it's it's really really fascinating just to think um of how enduring the catholic church is and all the different um, extensions of the Catholic Church and all the different orders. It, it's amazing to read about as well. Uh, I found this really cool story. I was telling them before you came on, Kelsey, that in Italy, um, in remembrance of Jesus in the temple at 12 years of age, they would invite boys in the town at Christmas to preach. And at six years of age, he preached. And it was so affected, effective that many more people entered Christian life just because of his preaching at six. So I kind of feel like he's the Mozart of Catholicism. Didn't Mozart write symphonies or something at four, five, or six? And so I kind of feel like, you know, um, of preaching. And I also found um, he loved Mary. Um, and he attributed a lot of um, the success of some of the governments that he worked with and the kings he worked with, he attribu attributed a lot of that to Mary. And he had a favorite blessing, which was Mary with her loving son, 
bless us each and every one. And I just think that's beautiful. Mm. So that was his favorite blessing. And how simple for an academic to make it that, that, that amazing and that succinct. So Becky, I got lost in there for a second. When you were talking about the um, six-year-old preaching, were you talking about Father Kyle or St. Lawrence? Oh, no, it was St. Lawrence. <laughs> I like, I just Benj, to, I know we got back Benj. on St. Lawrence. All yeah. right, uh, Benj, I know what your future holds. and That was a compliment. That, uh-huh. that was a compliment. Okay. Uh-huh. That was a compliment. You called my preaching <laughs> six years old, infantile, I see. <laughs> His infantile <laughs> preaching was better than... <laughs> oh, uh, oh, and the other thing I really wanted to say about uh, St. Lawrence is he loved seclusion, but he would obey so when he was called to go do things, he really would, he's my son, I think. My son would much rather be in seclusion. But when he was called to do things, he obeyed. That's what, you know, he had made this vow of obedience and he went wherever they called him to. And um, it reminded me of a quote. I just bought a sticker and it's from a Catholic artist. And it says, do what makes you happy. And happy is crossed out and it says holy do what makes you holy. And I thought, that's St. Lawrence. He would have been so much happier sitting in the monastery, (laughs) praying away his days. Mm. But the Lord and his elders and those in the order called, and those in governments called him to other things. So Mm. he obviously did what made himself holy. So let's get started. You guys ready? Yeah. I shuffled them and everything. It's very, very, very exciting. Okay, Andrea, you're first. Oh, I get to go first. I get to go first. I don't think I've ever had you go first, so I kind of feel like it's a little bit of a treat. (laughs) Okay. If he won the lottery, what do you think he would buy first? If he won the lottery, Mm -hmm. he would buy... Hmm... I'm going to say, like, land to build a library to have all of the books in all of the different languages to train all of the people. So when he was sent to go out, he could instead have people come to him. So he could still be secluded um, and yet teach and have all of these languages and, and teachings around him. Wow. I like that answer. Very good. Yes, and provide maybe books to people in the area, too. Yeah, I mean, he wouldn't want to coordinate that. That seems like a lot of administrative work. But he would just let people come to him and take them because they also have a vow of poverty, right? So, like, if you take it, if it's meant to come back, it'll come back. Yeah, a very very open borrowing policy, then. It would be, yeah, it would be an open library. (laughs) Open library. It'd be on your own conscience if you returned it or not. Yeah, he'd give you a stern look if he didn't, so there <laughs> there you go. Okay, awesome. Mr. Benj. Now, remember, this was also a sensitive man. Do you know he wept sometimes while he said mass because he loved oh. Jesus so much? Okay, so very sensitive man. If we made a film about him, who should be the actor who would play him? I think Father Kyle wanted to jump on that right away. <laughs> no, go ahead. You first, and then I'll I'll offer commentary. Um, this is a hard question because I'm not like super well versed in Hollywood stars. I see. Them I really all- thought Father Kyle was raising his hand. Like I'll play. No, him. no, no, no. I'll play I got him. someone. <laughs> I, I have a suggestion, but I, I'll go first. Mm, um. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna say, who would play him? You know, it depends what age of life we're gonna like put him That's in. True. Mm-hmm. You no. Know? Um. Let's see here. Uh, I'm going to go with, I think he was like at his peak when he was older. So maybe like we'll go with an older actor. And I think it would be funny to see like, uh, um, what's his name? Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. You know, go Father Kyle because it takes me, I'm terrible with names. So I need a second to think. I'm thinking <laughs> of these people's names go father Kyle. you got it i'll be I was, back i was gonna say peter o'toole oh because the lawrence of arabia isn't he dead yeah he is i think okay <laughs> he 
funeral tone. It was funny. It was funny. It is funny. We were talking about is Lawrence of Arabia this Lawrence? And it's not. And it's so, not. The, the so movie we Peter O'Toole made that. So see how it brought it full circle. You did bring it full circle. I was thinking a little bit about Tom Hanks. Only because I think he could pull huh. up the tears. But, you know, the academic, but also the people person. I don't know. All right. I got it. I got it. I had to look up the name, but I think Sylvester Stallone mm, because Sylvester it's got an Italian vibe, you know. Yo, Adrian. You <laughs> <laughs> may not be the, the most <laughs> eloquent in speech, but he's got this vibe of like, I don't want to talk to you, but you still look up to him, you know. And uh, <laughs> I can get behind this. You get behind that? Okay. Yeah. I, I, That's all I got. It's probably not the best, probably not the best portrayal. Andrea's that, saying no. That's what I thought. Of. <laughs> Father Ethan told this homily story about Sylvester Stallone having to sell his dog to make Rocky. And it's a very emotional story. And I think he has the emotion to make this happen. I think Sylvester Stallone would have that appeal too to the larger audience, you know, to get this out of the Catholic only sphere you know people will go like saint sylvester stallone what's going on they'd probably do a spin-off you know when he's in the war time and he's got the crucifix and he's you know just fighting people that's what rocky does so i don't know how that would work out but he's got a military vibe you know you never know and i think people have no clue about saints those who are not well i think most catholics don't know much about the saints we were at walmart yesterday with i was there with one of my young adults we were buying snacks i just love walmart it's so eat okay i love going to walmart for youth ministry because their tax exempt policy is so easy i just have a little card they punch the number in well the guy who looked at my receipt when i was walking out the door his name was augustine and i said oh my gosh your name is augustine do you know anything about the saint you were named after and he's like i'm not named after a saint i said you should go google him you should learn all about him it's so amazing <laughs> <laughs> you should learn about these people it's so cool anyway i'm sure he's like oh crazy catholic lady after he looked things up but maybe you never know maybe i planted a seed fantastic seed i think i scare people sometimes with my excitement um so that works it works with the kids. I think the adults, though, just start running away from me. So. Okay, Sylvester Stallone, I'm very, very, very impressed with uh, the Italian vibe part of that answer. So, Padre. <gasps> Lay it on me. If he could time travel, where would St. Lawrence go? So he can go forward, oh, backward, easy. anything. This okay. is easy. This is simple. He'd go to the nativity because he loved Mary. He loved the infant Jesus. He, he's depicted often depicted carrying the infant Jesus. So he would go to meet the infant Jesus when he was born. Simple as that. Wow. I thought you were going to say he would fast forward to World War I in Arabia. <laughs> oh, so he could be with Lawrence of Arabia too. Well, yeah, like, that would be easy. I was like, oh. It's going to be the Lawrence. Harry, That's he where he would go next. With him. <laughs> what was that, Andrea? Carry Jesus on the crucifix with him. Yeah. Win and the war. And stop the war before it even got going. <gasps> right. Oh, yeah. I like the that. Nativity Padre? was a great answer as well. Padre, Can we just bring him to today and stop the pandemic? Like for real. Ugh, for real. real. <laughs> for real. I was thinking when we were talking about what actor would play him in a film. Can we go to the movie theater right now? Because <laughs> that can't really yeah. do that right now yeah. definitely so, not maybe a sylvester stallone film would do it padre you take what you learn about him and you do apply it well very impressed very impressed uh -huh. see yep. yes yes okay kelsey your very first ever truth bomb question here you go oh pressure who, pressure i'm looking nervous <laughs> Who would St. Lawrence pick to be his sidekick? Now, when you answer this question, it does not have to be a real person. It could even be a cartoon sidekick or a superhero sidekick. And it does not even have to be someone who lived. So you really have a whole universe of people, I guess technically animals, that you could pick from. Technically but animals. Technically animals. Huh. Uh, talking okay. animals, I guess, in the Disney world. So who would he pick to be his little sidekick? I guess it wouldn't well, even have to be little. <laughs> little, bigger, I don't know. Okay, also, sorry, side, Father, do you have a podcast uh, yeah. microphone with you? Yeah. 
Yeah. You're way cool. I I keep muting because I'm afraid there's these bugs that make really loud noises. Anyway, um, I got distracted by that. I was like, that's cool. Okay, sidekick. Let's see. I mean, the first thought I had was Mary, um, which I feel like is the most Catholic answer you could give. But like, let's be real. He probably prayed for intercession anyway. She probably was his sidekick mm-hmm. the whole time. Mm-hmm. So she probably he, he would just probably be like, it'd be cool if you're like, you know, physically present. So <laughs> that was right my here. Yeah, I yeah. like that. Probably I would guess though, the version of Mary would probably be I'm gonna go with Our Lady Guadalupe. Mm. Because she helped evangelize like so many millions of people and she spoke Spanish, she speaks to like the Aztec, like all people. So he'd probably go with like Our Lady Guadalupe. Later, Guadalupe. Yeah, it says that, I mean, he was sent to help um, combat Lutheranism. He was, that's why he was just sent all over the place to convert the Jews. I mean, mm-hmm. our lady Guadalupe would be an ultimate, you know, with her little, little shining behind her, you know. Well, the people would be a little freaked out too if she just appeared. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> Healthy dose of fear, I think, maybe. You know, he studied at the University of Padua. Was he friends with Anthony of Padua? Although Anthony Padua would have been way earlier. Right. Would... Different different era, I think. But, different era. Yeah. May nope. have been a saint friend. Yeah. yeah. Mm, that's true. Not that I'm like denying that Mary would be an ultimate sidekick, because you know, Mary would be the ultimate sidekick, but, <laughs> yeah. but I, think, it. I actually think Saint Anthony of Padua was the um the saint that was canonized the quickest. Anthony of Padua? That, yeah. That, of, yeah. Wow. I think he was, because I was like, would he have been a saint? Because sometimes it takes hundreds of years mm-hmm. to be a saint, like St. Lawrence of Brandisi. But I remember when I was in Padua, we were doing, or when I was in Assisi, we were doing a tour. And someone said, like the tour guide said, fun fact, who's the quickest canonized saint? And we were all like, oh, St. Francis, because we're in Assisi. And, and I can recall, they're like, no, St. Anthony of Padua. And the guy said, do you know why? And I, was, I said, I don't know. And he said, because the Pope said, quote, I knew the guy. Oh. <laughs> Quick way in. You knew the guy. There you go. When you were talking about, like, that's so <laughs> fascinating. You were talking about the Saint Buddy, Pat- Padre, or um, Kelsey, you were saying, well, it could have been a Saint Buddy, you know, even if they didn't live at the same time. John Newman, that was Alphonsus Liguori was his. They were both redemptorist yeah. priests, and Alphonsus Liguori yeah. lived long before him, and he, that was, that was his uh, true sidekick besides Jesus and Mary, obviously, but he, in his prayers, you can read his prayers and he refers to Alphonsus Liguori often, which is so fascinating. I love knowing who their patron saints were. Who were your saints patron saints? Mm -hmm. I did truth bombs on St. Anthony of Padua, Becky, and he was, he was canonized within a year of his death. That's fast. Wow. Super, super, super fast. But Less yeah, I knew here. him. I love that. I knew. I knew. <laughs> okay, Miss Patch, here you go. Oh, I just shared a fun fact. You can skip me. No, no, no. no. <laughs> That's not how this works. That's not oh, how any of this works. No, 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 no. You have to answer. There are no pass go cards here. <laughs> no, they are not. Which superhero? would he be considered the most like? You do not have to narrow yourself to just Marvel. You do not have to just narrow yourself to DC. You can kind of go any superhero. I mean, you could say Grover. You're speaking as if I know any of these. You could say Grover. <laughs> like, I, need, I need to call a friend, nerdy husband, who are the superheroes that I could call on. <laughs> I mean, you know superheroes, Superman, Spider-Man, you know the basic ones, right? <laughs> <laughs> just say any word and then say man or woman after it and you've got a superhero Probably. wonder woman yeah. incredible hulk mm. I, I'm, I'm googling multilingual superheroes for you multilingual <laughs> superheroes <laughs> a rabbit hole he just went down oh it's great oh my gosh well, Superman was like Clark Kent, right? Yes. Yeah. Like he went back and forth. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with Superman because he's got like the sensitive human side, the ability to like reason, be supportive, understand people's needs, but then also like morph into this superhero and just go fix the situation. Mm-hmm. Which 
Brindisi, Lawrence of Brindisi did. He went and fixed situations, right? Absolutely. Fixed situations. Convert all those Jews. Yeah. Yeah. All those Jews and all those Lutherans. Goodness gracious. Yeah, I, like I, I I struck out with multilingual superheroes. It was not a good. Well, I was trying to Google like Marvel <laughs> superheroes, and I'm like, this is out of my league. No, we're gonna <laughs> it doesn't work. Go with someone I know so that I can actually come up with a story. My husband you, will be disappointed in me. You you made an excellent connection. I will keep you around, Andrea. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, connection ooh, was ooh. pretty good for not knowing any superheroes. That, I found one. Was. I found one. Okay, the, yeah. the intergalactic bounty hunter Lobo professes that he can speak 17,897 languages, including, of course, American English. Because wow. he's, he's uh, in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy? Is that no, I don't is? know. It's, oh. no, DC, well, I thought about saying Captain DC America Earth. just to be ironic, you know, <laughs> Captain America. Yeah, no. Because <laughs> Americans know one language and even then we don't know it well. <laughs> English is really hard. We have issues yeah. with that during meetings. Like what we can't speak. Um, okay. So Mr. Claire, what would be the one thing in the world that St. Lawrence would hate the most? Obviously it probably wouldn't be a person because you know, good little saint <laughs> would hate people, but there's gotta be something in the world. He just did not like. Um, my guess is if he was a pretty well devoted Capuchin, it would be um, like, um, like uh, bad mouthing the superior, or like acts of disobedience. Because mm. if you vow your life to a community, that's like, it's like, it would be like talking back to your parents, you can do it, you can challenge your parents, especially if your parents don't um, if you question that your parents have the best intention in mind for you, mm -hmm. but if you so distrust and disobedience to like the, your parents, to the, to the uh, superior the order, then you like the ground on which everything stands just falls. Like you can't do anything. So my guess is he would hate, he would hate that within his community. Uh, probably the most distrust, disobedience, um, and he was Mr. Punctual, it sounds like. He was, he obeyed, he was punctual. So I, I agree with you, Benj. I think that would be, he would really dislike that behavior. I could also see him whispering to someone later, you really got to show up on time. or You really, really got to do what you're told. Um, In the general group meetings, he's found saying in very eloquent terms, some people in this room aren't showing up on time. I'm not going to say who it is. You know, I have my faults too, but I think it's something that should be addressed. He's not going to say who it is, but he's going to look right at them. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, it's <laughs> Joe. I mean, I would start to get afraid anytime he has a crucifix in his hand because he's oh. going to war. You yeah. Know? So if he gets up there with the crucifix in hand, you're you're dead. Like you're dead. You're in trouble. Big trouble. Big, big So last trouble. night, my four-year-old comes up to me and she goes, Mom, do you know who I hate the most? I'm like, no, I don't, Kate. Who do you hate the most? She goes, guess. I'm like, um, your baby brother. No. No. Oh, and it's not anyone that lives in this house. I'm like, okay, who do you, who do you hate the most, Kate? She goes, the devil. <laughs> I go wow and the Whoa. next question was do you know who I love the most I'm like well if we're going by this same logic is it Jesus mm -hmm. well I was going to say God but yes <laughs> Jesus and, God. and Kate I could totally see Kate coming to you and very so, so serious mom, mom. 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 Yes. Okay. It wouldn't be Claire who would do that. It would totally even be it, it. Yeah, you didn't have to say who it was. I could have guessed for sure. For yes. Sure. I can't wait to see how these boys are alike or different from each other like your girls are. It'll be fun to watch. Oh, true. Fun, fun to watch. Okay, Padre, this <gasps> yes. is probably the ultimate question that people oh. either love to get or hate nice. to get. And it is. Is it about fast food? Yes. If yes. he were an item on the McDonald's menu, what item would he be? 
See, I can't say the Big Mac because I am not a Big Mac fan. Yeah. Um, I'd rather have the quarter pounder with cheese, but I think that's too cliche. Mm-hmm. I think he would be <laughs> like, do they still have like the McFlurry? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, everybody loves the McFlurry. It's it would it would I mean if we just passed out McFlurries, wars would end, uh, tension <laughs> would cease, and that's just all about him. That's what he was all about. So I think he would just be the McFlurry because he's you know, and he's Capuchin, so it's 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 brownish, and so he wore a brown habit, and and he just was like, and everybody loves a Capuchin. Everybody mm-hmm. loves a McFlurry. There Ice we go. cream cuts through all the languages. That's it right. Really does. That's right. It's the <laughs> it universal really language. Does. It really does. Do you know what the kids, um, I was with two kids who normally we go on, would go on mission trips with me, but this year, of course, we didn't go on mission trips. Mm. And one's a graduate and he starts talking about, we just were at an ice cream place. He starts talking about all the fabulous ice cream places we've been in every city we've got on mission trip. And we had custard here and we had gelato here. <laughs> that This is how you mission trip. The mission trips were good yes. too, but ice cream does, yeah. it, it crosses all <laughs> boundaries. It brings people mm-hmm. together. It does, it does bring people together. So now see, I really want to make flurry with my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> what causes issues? You're oh. welcome. <gasps> I was going to say, Kelsey, you went off with video too for just a second. <laughs> I went, went to, to get a McFlurry. Get a McFlurry. <laughs> I was like, let's get that McFlurry. I'm gone. Yeah, I went yesterday. I was very excited. What kind did you have? The M&M one. That's it's my very favorite. thick with M and M's. That's that's the ultimate. That means you had some new worker who didn't know and just kept putting a bunch of M and M's in, and so yeah, that. And she was I okay think, with that. I was totally okay with it. Actually, I went past like four different places where I could get ice cream. I went to Burger King. The Shake Machine was. I was too dedicated to this. Shake Machine was shut down. <laughs> the DQ line had like. 10 cars in it and it was like out onto the road and I was like no no it's Culver's same situation went to McDonald's had to wait in like a double wide line but we did it it took like only a few minutes good good does Chick-fil-a yeah. have have like a flurry they of- have shakes and they have cones shakes. oh they do have shakes that's true mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and they have cones. their best thing though is their frosted lemonade I'm not gonna lie I, I can see how good. some people don't like it but it's so good if you like a lemonade, they have frosted it's coffee, best. frosted lemonade, frosted orange juice seasonally. Wow. Wow. He Very doesn't good. like to play it all. Husband, oh man, my loving husband waited in line for 30 minutes to get me a shake from Steak and Shake yesterday. <gasps> really? Wait, wait, wait. You that found a steak? Sh- you found a Steak and Shake that None was ours, open? Ours are closed. There's the Steak and Shake like two minutes from our house. That's still I'm open. Busy. They're not open anywhere around here. They're all They're all gone on the west side. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're all gone. Oh, that's sad. sad. Mm-hmm. It's sad. And they had, well, when they were working well, they even some of their food, I would go for some of their sandwiches and stuff because I love a good greasy burger, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. See, now I'm hungry. Okay, Kelsey, it's good. <laughs> now we I only have a couple too. minutes. It's, it's, almost, lunch. Lunch it's okay. almost lunchtime. It's almost lunchtime. Kelsey? Yes. If St. Lawrence there's not a limit when it comes to color or an amount we're given play-doh what would he make with oh. his play-doh <laughs> play-doh mm-hmm. and i mean play-doh comes in multiple colors i know yeah. i have it in my youth ministry closet it's not just red yellow and blue anymore it's a whole new world <clears throat> this is an excellent question but so confusing we have a cooking <laughs> set for Play-Doh. We have a grill kit for Play-Doh at our house. We have a dollhouse. We have an ice cream maker for Play-Doh. Man, Play-Doh has you gotten are, way more advanced. You are. Right oh my right. gosh. Okay. I don't know why. This is the first thing because of mine. It has nothing to do with literally anything we've talked about. But I feel like he would make a boat out of Play-Doh. Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't know why, but I'm just trying to think of something that he and his brother Capuchins can enjoy leisurely together on a Sunday mm. after he gives a homily and enjoys it. And the things that I thought of were here in Houghton, things that are normal here, but they're not normal where he was at, like a snowmobile or a sauna or weird things like that. But I think a boat would probably, he, he and his brothers could enjoy that mm-hmm. on a Sunday after you know and because you can right. eat play-doh they could take a little bit of the side of the boat if they were hungry 
Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Kids do eat Play-Doh and it's disgusting. <laughs> Okay. Good. You can eat it though. Can you? You eat can it? eat it. It's non-toxic. Yes, it's absolutely. Never mind. Okay, it's absolutely it. non non-toxic. Okay, we're gonna do one question and you all get to answer it. Okay, because yes. we're we're lowering down on the um, amount of time that we have here. So I have two choices. You want to do the paint color one, or you want to do the date from hell one? Oh my gosh. Andrea date might not hell. know the, the date from hell. Date from hell. Okay, so you all can answer if fa Father, oh wait, now Saint Saint Lawrence Brin of Brindisi, if he were on a date and it were awful, what would he do to get out of it? So, oh, oh, Andrea, you're first. What would he do to get out of it? He would accidentally spill some wine on her and then very caringly walk her home to show his compassion for her and end the date that way. And end the date. Oh, dang. She went nice. Oh. So it wouldn't be harsh because he is kind. Yeah. Oh, he's a very bummer. sensitive man and he's a saint. He's holy. Come on now. <laughs> he didn't say, I mean, clean up your thoughts. I, I mean, saints I, are not usually saintly their whole life. So. That's fair. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it, it's okay. But, but he gave a stellar homily at the age of six. Yes. So let's just say, well, you know, on this day, he's going to be, yeah. He's doing the holy thing early. Okay. Mm -hmm. Benj Claire, or should I say Benj Claire, how have you gotten out on a date? No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> that would be a much better story. Well, <laughs> yes. Uh, I will bring you a McFlurry, Benj, on okay, the yeah, west side of Cincinnati. When I said, how would I? This is. You're, you're, um, you, you be so nice and complimentary that when you drop her off at the end of the night, she, she's not sure if you broke up with her or not, but you did. That's probably, the, <laughs> that's a joke, but I was like, oh, you know, nice. You can always play it like so nice where at the end of it, you're like, I think you just broke up with me, but I feel great about who I am as a person, <laughs> you know? And then, <laughs> uh, but I would say this is what he would do. He would play it because he's smart. He would play it cautious at the beginning and speak whatever language she speaks with some difficulty. And if it weren't going well, he would just start talking in his native language. And she would get the idea that he can't really, you know, he doesn't really know her language. And he could switch to whichever one seemed more, seemed more reasonable, you know? Like if she felt like he had a, you know, a, a Bavarian vibe. He could start speaking some German because he was fluent in that. <laughs> and she's like, uh, he's a great guy, but it could never work. We don't speak the same language. You Literally. Know? She would get, Literally. he would get her to break up with him. He would get her to break up with him. See, because... and I also, Benj, when you were talking about all the compliments, sometimes girls are freaked out when a guy keeps complimenting over and over and over and over again because it kind of, it, it yeah. sends off a little bit of a creepy look andrea's shaking her head yes i mean there's sometimes okay <laughs> have you ever been on a date before that's what you start to be overly sensitive and affirming and she just couldn't handle it she was yeah. a real man yeah you know not a not a friend not a complimentary <laughs> friend Padre, you look so ready to answer this. They, they took the two I was going to. Well, oh. I didn't. I, well, let's be honest. I didn't have Andrea's because I'm not that nice. Um, <laughs> and Andrea went way nicer. But Benj stole mine. I was going to say he was going to start talking in a different language. Oh. Um, uh, so then I, I, I thought, okay, I thought he would just start talking theology, you know, and because, you know, that's no, nothing, nothing kills a date faster than that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. And that's here at Franciscan University. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nothing kills a conversation with my husband faster than going down the theological route. He's like, that's oh, right. yeah, I'm out. Yeah. Peace Call out, someone homies. else. <laughs> Okay, I, I agree, Patri. That that's a good one too. Miss Kelsey, have they taken all of yours? Oh my gosh, I was thinking of fathers, but here's the deal: we're going like legit historical. This is what's up. You would have been what, sixteen? Oh yeah. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He could have just like so. It's like end the date early. He could have just called his like mom to 
pick them up. <laughs> my mom picked me up. We have to go see my grandma, or you know, and that would really be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or grandma, or you know, and they would have been yeah. with a chaperone, most likely chaperone take yeah. us home. <laughs> take us home. Saint Bessie, even like, hey, <laughs> it's time to go, and that is good. See, you thought historical, Kelsey. Of course, I rarely go historical. I thought he could just sit down with her and say, "I'm discerning a call to the priesthood." Would you like? To <laughs> that would. That's happen. how eighty percent of Catholic breakups happen. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, they're dating another girl. You're like, what's going on? You're like, you know, well, I prayed about it, and I realized. I'm, I, uh, I yeah. wasn't called to it. I wasn't right called. Now. Right now. I might right be again now. in a week. <laughs> <laughs> when I was praying, a girl walked into the church, and I was like, That's it? is that a sign? Seems That's like a sign. <clears throat> like a sign. I mean, we got Jesus and the girl. Yeah, there it is. There's your oh, sign. God and the girl. Old TV show. Do you remember that? There was a TV mm-hmm. show, God or the Girl. Uh-huh. God or the Girl. Really? Yeah. Was it yes. like a reality uh, what? show? Or? It was a reality it show. Was it was. And following it was... men that were discerning the priesthood. Yes. It would make for good reality TV. There's a and lot I, of drama. I like actually know one of the guys that was on that show. I met him later. Me too. In seminary? Yeah. Hmm? Did you meet him in seminary? No. No, no. I know his wife. <laughs> <laughs> was it the girl? Was it the girl from the show? <laughs> Apparently. Was it the same girl from the show, Andrew? Yeah. Okay. Wow. We chose the girl. That is fascinating. Yeah. Well, obviously, St. Lawrence of Brindisi did not pick the girl. So, you know the answer no. for him. God um, went out. So, let's just end this. I actually learned a lot about him. I can't wait. I keep thinking next year when these saints come back through on the calendar, we're going to know a lot more about them, which is which is amazing. And hopefully all you youth ministry land people do too. I think awesome. it's feast days like next week. Yes, and that's why we're doing it. So yeah, that's why we're doing Oh, Doug, this is going to sh- be released on his feast day. <laughs> <laughs> I literally... <laughs> No, his feast day is today. The day that this podcast is going live. Uh, no, yeah, today. not today. Yeah. It's not okay, today, so it'll be next week. The thing is, I thought this whole thing through earlier when I was reading about him. I was like, oh, his feast day is next week. Therefore, we're going to talk about him. They're going to learn him. And I still said it. Which I think <laughs> is actually somewhere in here. I believe maybe. So he died on the feast of Mary Magdalene. Which was also his birthday. Right, he yeah. died on the yes was, on his birthday on July twenty second. I was yeah. like, why is he not? Why is his why is his feast day not on? And then I looked it up. as like, oh, he got trumped by Mary Magdalene. Yeah, he got trumped by fair. Mary Magdalene. So, fair, fair enough. But that's I mean, Close to die Jesus. on a feast day like that, and it's your birthday. That's pretty yeah. significant. So, but yeah. let's remember Saint Lawrence Brandisi and the blessing he gave to you all around him, Mary with her loving son. Bless us each and every one. So you all have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining us. You can wave goodbye to the kids. Father Kyle's putting his mask on. Wear your mask, case. people. Wear your just, mask. Just in case the COVID comes through. Yeah. Screen, yeah. You know, we have yeah. to do that. Okay, <laughs> bye, guys. We'll see you see soon. Y'all. Check your emails yep. for upcoming events. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay.